No. If you are alive today, it is because he delivered you from every evil works. He delivered your children from every evil works. In the name of Jesus, Father, we bless you. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We praise your name. If you know that and you believe that in 2022, the Lord will continue to deliver you from every evil way, then bless him for this scripture. Bless him for what he has done this year. We give you glory. 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 We will lift up your name higher. We will lift up your name higher. Great Jehovah, you are wonderful. We will lift up your name higher, higher, higher. Great Jehovah, you are wonderful. We will lift up your name Yes, we will lift up your name higher. we will lift up your name higher. great Jehovah you are wonderful we will lift up your name higher 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 great Jehovah you are wonderful we will lift up your name higher. oh we will lift up your name Ah, yeah. We will lift up your name higher. Ah, Great Jehovah, you are wonderful. We will lift up your name higher. Ah, yeah. Great Jehovah, you are wonderful. We will lift up your name higher. Ah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray this prayer. The Bible says, and it is written, therefore we're going to pray to enforce it in our lives, experientially, practically. He says, no weapon of the enemy formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment, we shall condemn. Therefore, we're going to pray. Every weapon of the enemy against us, against our children. Oh, you have no idea how much the devil is after your children. How much he's working his way to get them out of Christ. You have no idea. You have no idea. There are times I see things, but I keep quiet. You have no idea how he determined to move on your kids to do some things. That is why you must pray. The devil hates children that are in church. If they were out there fooling, drinking, womanizing and manizing and clapping and doing it, then the, the devil is happy. But they are for Christ. Their heart is for God. As young as they are, they are serving God. You don't know how that breaks the heart of the enemy. But the good news is no weapon of the enemy for magician shall prosper. Amen. Precious one. Let me say this because we've been fooling ourselves too much. It is written, but it is at the mercy of your prayer for it to be released practically in your life. It is written doesn't mean it's automatic. If it's automatic, every believer will be flying. It's at the mercy of whenever you see anything, you pray it into your life. Jesus has done everything. It is by prayer that we practically enforce it in our lives. No weapon of the enemy 
form against us shall prosper. That means anything that is of the devil, sickness, poverty, whatever, I mean, everything of the devil must not prevail against us. It must not be seen in our lives. If believers will lift up their voice, if believers will lift up their voice, if believers will lift up their voice, therefore right now in agreement, the Bible says what two or three shall agree as touching on earth, it shall be granted. And we stand on Mount Zion, where the seed of Jacob shall possess their possession, and there shall be deliverance. Therefore in agreement shall we lift up our voice. Shall we lift up our voice unto God right now? That there will be a release against any weapon that is formed against us spiritually, physically, materially, financially, our children, our destiny, whatever it is, lift your voice. God is here. Jesus is here. The angels are here. The blood is being sprinkled. Let your voice be heard. Let your voice, let your voice be heard. In the name of Jesus. Leya brahi in boro kabra san la shikaya. Baron de manaki alabrosia. Blekara in bleka shikoro baki blanda. Yele manaki ataria. Balia noro makili manasunde kakaka brakia sote. Aliya mando koro brakasi kete. Aliya tori kabranda klami na suteri kababa. Sekele manakuro bakia la mande kaka. Ele mrekete ilimana kasturo bakanglia. La shiko ilimana sante la braka tuye. Bela baba like imbarakra makusoko tayanda. Ela mina klala brande kia. Elei maraya kaliye ke ni manakuna gokoro makasi yanda. Ete brekatanda ni matoye. Jele mara iki manasabito yaba. Babo kia maleyi ke. Sorokabla angete ili manja katarabo kubla sute kaya. In the name of Jesus. Leke ne manakuro yabia. Seve nene breke ne manakaka. Let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Father, look upon your people here with message. Look upon your precious ones that are watching us, that are with us online and watching us on their social media platforms, watching us on their silver screen. Be merciful unto them, Lord. Be merciful unto them, Lord. Let the wickedness of the wicked in their life come to an end by your power. In the name of Jesus. Lenge ili matai le kabo. Rasha keli mana katara bake. Blendari ya mini katara baku yende. Asunde yi keli mana kaya. Jela branda. Yes, lift your voice. Lift your voice unto him. Raise your voice unto him. The devil is not joking, he's not playing games. Therefore, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Ali kondoro bakaza siyataya baba Mala teli kende boko yes Ele mirende ili makala kuru baka Sonde ya kia la baba yike In the mighty name of Jesus Jele mana kala brakuru briyande Ele maradaya In Jesus mighty name now we are praying. He said, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You are born again. The Holy Spirit lives inside you.
The power of death and life is in your tongue. Therefore, you're going to lift up your voice. Any pronouncement of curse upon your life, any negative utterance that has ever been pronounced on you, whether it's 10 years ago, 50, 100 years, the mystery about words is that when it is pronounced, there is a spirit behind it. If it's negative, it's a demonic spirit. If it's positive, it's the Holy Spirit that backs it. So they can live for hundreds of years. That is why somebody might do something to another person and the person looks at him and says, you will suffer all your life. The moment he, the person pronounced those words, the evil spirit took it up to ensure that what has been pronounced will manifest. So no matter what the person does, no matter his level of education, no matter who he's married to, no matter what country he lives in, that force follows him or her. That is why the Bible says you must condemn it. Therefore, this moment, we're going to raise our voice and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, every pronouncement of curse, of hardship, of sickness, any pronouncement that is of the devil pronounced on me, even though I might have done something to provoke somebody, but today as I'm in Christ, my Lord has paid the price. Therefore, according to your word that is written, I condemn it. Raise your voice right now. I condemn. I condemn. Some of the words were pronounced upon you and your children, children, even before they were born. Your unborn generation were cursed before they were born. But today, on this mountain, by the power of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost, Jesus is glorified. Every satanic pronouncement from ancestors, from daddy, from mommy, from people in authority, wherever it came from, today by the blood, we cancel every third pronouncement. We destroy its effect in our lives, in this commission, in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 We condemn it. We condemn it. We condemn it. We condemn it. Every negative pronunciation upon us, upon our destiny, we condemn it. We condemn it. We condemn it in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, lift your voice and give him praise. 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 We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Most blessed, most glorious. Ye ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we pray. Most blessed, most glorious, ye ancient of days. Oh, God. 
challenges here and there. But in every challenge, Jesus was glorified. In every challenge, the hand of God was revealed. And that is why we are not afraid of challenges. The Lord has brought us this far because he has great plans for you and I. He has preserved us from every evil work because our lives is very important to God on earth. God has planned to execute his end time agenda, making you and I an instrument of execution by protecting us, healing us, anointing us, blessing us, giving his angels charge over us, giving us good life, breakthroughs, sending destiny helpers into our lives. All the good things God is doing for us is so that we will be able to carry on his divine agenda on earth. That is why it is important to be determined that for the sake of Christ, you are going to break through in every area of your life. First, spiritually, then physically, and financially. For some reason, many people are afraid to talk about financial blessings because there have been all kinds of distorted teachings, making people to think that when you become financially rich, then you are worthy. Because Jesus said it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. But you see, they just pick a verse out of context. You know, Jesus was talking about someone who was rich, but he wasn't rich towards God. And he thinks because of his physical riches, God is unnecessary. You know, so that was the person Jesus was talking about. But God wants us to be rich. The Bible says Jesus became poor, that through his poverty we might be rich. He paid the price for us to be rich. The Bible also says that God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. And the Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. And the Bible says, it is through the prosperity of my children I will spread my word. So you see why it is so important for you to prosper. The only danger with prosperity is when you want it with the wrong motive. When you want prosperity with the wrong motive, that is when it is dangerous. But if you have the right motive that the prosperity God is bringing my way, number one is because of his kingdom. When you make his kingdom number two, you just enjoy mercy drops. But you want the showers of his blessings to break you through music? This, this is it. God doesn't have problem doing anything for us. He, he's a God of the sudden. I mean, he, he can do things suddenly. 
But God is waiting for our motives and our hearts. That's, that's what we have to do with. On the side of God, he has no problem at all. He's God. There is nothing too hard for him to do. He said, I'm the God of all flesh. He said, in case you are wondering, I'm the one that picked the poor from the mud and I place him among princes. I, God, I do that. God doesn't need one week to make you rich if he wants to do it. God can move on any man to put something in your hand that you'll be afraid to take it. I was watching a movie and a lady who got money and the money brought problem to her so she decided to give it out. And we are talking of millions, cash. She packed the money in a big bag and here were some two guys sitting in the corner. I mean, real broke guys. Like, let's say people, two guys that have never even tied $20 before and all of a sudden, the lady walks to them. He said, I have some money here, you can have it. Now, the guys thought he was joking. Like, you mean this bag is money? He, she gives it to them and turned into the taxi and drove away. The guys opened, it was $5 million. Let's say $5 million cash. They opened it the moment they saw the money. Come and see speed. They left the money there. Speed. Like what? You understand? That, that's what God can do in your life. God can just release something to you that you'll be afraid to even accept it. So the reason I'm saying this is that God doesn't have problem. Let, let's not behave as if God is having difficulty doing what we want. He does, the problem is with us. The motive and the heart. The motive why we want it. Because remember Deuteronomy 8.18. It is the Lord thy God that giveth thee power to make world, that he might fulfill his covenant. So, if God is going to release his wealth into your life, then your heart and your motive must line up with his word. So, I'm not asking God to bless me because I want to live in mansions and drive big cars and, and wear a $500,000 uh, watch and drive a $1 million car. No, I'm not speaking against all these things. But if that is the motive, then you are thinking like the world. You understand? But when God releases his blessing of wealth into your life, all those things will come. Of course, when God makes somebody a millionaire, his address will change. You understand? But that is not the motive. That is not the primary reason. This is where many believers are not getting it. You understand? The purpose is his kingdom. And I'm telling you, precious one, soon and very soon, Jesus is coming. And when I say Jesus is coming, I'm not talking about the second coming of Christ. I'm talking about the rapture. Please, don't, don't joke. Hey, I don't know about you. You want to experience the tribulation church? They'll fool around. You think it's a joke? You think the Bible is joking? You think we are just telling stories? The rapture can even happen before this service ends. Everything the Bible talks about, that when we see it, then the rapture can happen. It has all happened. And the things that are going to be happening are only things that are preparing the ground for the Antichrist. And we can see the, the, the wind beginning to blow. Preparing the ground for the Antichrist. A lot of things are going to happen. Many people are going to be in, in governmental powers, president, that, that hate God to the core. They hate the church. And they are doing, putting things together. And do you know why God is not stopping them? Because scriptures must be fulfilled. They must prepare the ground for the Antichrist. And as all this is going on, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, 
So shall it be. When Noah was telling them, rain is coming, repent, they laugh. They scorn him. They mock him. Old man, your brain is upside down. Have you seen rain before? It took Noah 120 years to build the ark, preaching 120 years and the people will not listen. And the Bible says while they were partying, while they were doing business, while they were visiting boyfriend, girlfriends, while they were clubbing, nightclubs here and there, all of a sudden the rain started. And now they were crying, Noah opened. Noah said, I wish I could. It is God that locked it. And when God shuts, nobody opens except himself. So pray to him in case you open. But it was too late. He said that is how it will be. Today some people mock us. They think we are stupid for being Christians. They think we are stupid for from following Christ. By living the life of Christ. By teaching our children to follow Christ. They think we are stupid. We are in a modern world. Technological world. Let's have good time. My son Katie told me something some time ago when he was in the high school and a lot of the boys in school were shocked because he doesn't smoke. Why should that shock? Now, do you see the kind of world we are living in? Boys at the age of 16, 17 and they are shocked you don't smoke. When I was 16, I think the West cigarette cry, if you mention it, I would know what it is. You understand? A lady that is in college came to me, so disturbed. Why? All her friends are mocking her in college because she doesn't have a boyfriend. And I said, listen to me, precious one. You are too precious. They are jealous of you. They wish they, <coughs> excuse me, they wish they could be like you. They are messing themselves, giving themselves free to women and men, and you are not doing it. That makes you special. Stand strong. When they were graduating, he said, one of the girls came to him. He said, you see, we were saying all those things about you because we were jealous. I wish I could be like you. I don't know why I started this. When she came home and called me and she was telling me, he said, didn't I tell you? He said, Pastor, I told my mother, Pastor Travis said the exact thing to me. I said, that's right. So don't let you think it's modernization, it's civilization. It is demonic, it is devilish messing the young ones up. And we have to be ashamed of it. There's nothing civilized about it. And we are in church. You think God is playing games? Something is about to happen. But my prayer is that nobody in this commission will be found wanting. Say, believe in heaven. Amen. Nobody. And my prayer is that if you have not tasted financial prosperity before, get ready. Amen. This is not a believing amen. amen. You are saying amen like you are, you are hungry. You didn't even fuck up. I'll let them get some sandwich here for you. They have some in the vending machine. I'll get one for you and the five hundred. Yeah, it's business now. Amen. Amen. If you haven't tasted prosperity before, get ready. Because the year 2022, whether the devil like, let all the forces of darkness come against us, it's going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen. And listen, it is going to happen by the mighty hand of the Most High. Amen. By the angels of God. And so we are going to commit ourselves to the way of God. The principle of God. And our attitudes must change. Some of you, you must change your friends. So, you see, there are a lot of people, they don't know the problem is the friends they keep. You understand? The friends they keep. I told somebody, how much does your friends enhance your work with God. What are the things they say that makes you stand strong in Christ? You don't have such friends. You have, you have surrounded yourself with those who talk as if you are stupid 
for being a Christian. And you call them friends. I don't know why some people behave as if their destiny is in the hands of friends. I believe in friendship. But I believe in friendship that enhances my work with Christ. I believe in friendship. But I believe in friendship that brings ideas for breakthroughs. Not friendship for social media nonsense and gossip. Some of you have friends that, and excuse my language, any stupid thing that will appear on social media, they are the first to see it and send it to you. So you laugh. Let's get serious. Amen. Amen. Let's get serious. Let's get serious. Because the devil is attacking, like I said last week, he's attacking the supernaturality of the church. He's confusing people about the supernatural. He wants believers to be normal people. But the Bible says, he that is born of the spirit is spirit. It's not a normal life. You understand? Christianity is supernatural. When you get born again, one of the advantages is that you can operate both in the natural and in the spirit. That's awesome. But the thing is, we don't prepare for that. We are not trained for that. Very important. We don't operate only in the physical. We operate in the spirit because life is spiritual. And our breakthroughs, our success, our victory, everything is in the spirit. When it happens in the spirit, it will automatically manifest in the physical. So important. So let us be spiritually mindful. You understand? Let us be spiritually mindful. We are, by God's grace, by the Holy Spirit, we are going to go into what it takes to encounter the various forms of graces. For the Bible says God is able to make all grace abound to you. So there are graces. There is a grace for everything. You understand? Grace for everything. Grace for divine speed. Grace for prosperity. Grace for divine health. Grace for breakthrough. Grace for victory. Grace for death. I mean, grace for everything. That is why Paul said, after he had God has used him to do all kinds of awesome things, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. Now, that's a good news. That should make you happy. Because it's not by might. It's not by power. If it's by might and power, some of us should forget it. If it's by might and power to succeed, some of us forget it because there are some of us where we come from, the background. It's like our background veto success. You can't come from that place and succeed in life. Forget it. There are those who have financial advantages because they were born into rich homes. By the time he was 15, daddy had bought a mansion for him. His name is on it. He doesn't need to work to buy mansion. And there are those who, by the time you were 20, daddy and mommy were living in a single room. Now look at these two boys. And all of them are facing life. You understand? We have those two that they were born into rich homes, they were put into good schools, they went to good universities, the Yales and the and the Vanderbilt's and the and the Harvard's and, and the Oxford and, and the Gambridge and all those things. So they learn the, the money is there. They, they, they made it comfortable for them to go to school. When they stand and speak grammar, you know that, yes. And then we have the other one too. He was born into a home where that he was a, a very poor farmer, not rich, poor farmer. By the time he got to second grade, daddy said there is no need for school.
Follow me too far. You understand? You see, I want you to appreciate the grace of God. So, such a person, physically speaking, tell me how you succeed. Poor background, no education, he can't read and write. In this world, this kind of world, how do such a person succeed? Say the grace. The grace. All that such a person needs to do is to give his life or her life to Jesus Christ. And once he becomes born again, now God is able to make all grace abound unto me. God looks at his heart. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Daniel, is it Daniel 1 11? He said, as for these boys, I think Daniel was empty rather. He said, as for these boys, God gave them weighty inventions, skills, and not he gave it. They didn't have to go to school, he gave it to them. This kind God, I never see your kind of. This kind God, oh, blessed be your holy name. You don't know God. So God has created advantage. There are systems of advantages for the believer. The only one that is his advantage is the one who hasn't given his life to Jesus. Once you come into Christ, your background is irrelevant. Whether you are born to rich family or poor, it doesn't matter again. Let's look at an example. David comes from the poorest home. In the poorest community, their home was the poorest. His father, Jesse, was poor. And in the poor family, David was the poorest. He was the one that when we are calling for kings, his name is not mentioned. <laughs> but God picked this guy You see, the irony part of it is he never even prayed for it. David never dreamt that one day I'll be king. He never had a vision. Nobody prophesied. He never prayed. As a matter of fact, it would have been stupid for him to pray. The father, uh, one day make me a king. Considering his background. All that, all that, the, you see, all that God found about David was a heart for God. In his poverty, in his misery, in his poor family, the boy had a heart for God. And that is what made the difference in his life. So God said, I have found David, my servant. Before God will even start using him, he said, I have found him. I have found him. Why? For the Bible says, the eyes of God is looking to and fro, seeking for those whose hearts are perfect towards him. The word perfect doesn't mean sinless or faultless. The word perfect means those whose hearts are yearning for God. And he found it in David. And look at such a boy from such background. God just picked this boy, anointed him, and used him to do something to glorify him before the whole Israel. To the extent that the king got jealous. A 17-year-old killing a giant when the whole army runs away from him. David did not stand before Goliath as David. He stood before Goliath as an anointed boy. God only used him. My prayer, my earnest heartfelt prayer for you, that as God ushers us into 2022, he will use you to solve a problem that will blow the minds of everyone. He will use you to solve a problem that will catapult you into glorious realms and bring glory to Jesus. So let's prepare ourselves. Let's allow, let's, let's, let's spend quality time with God for God to make us valuable. Because your value determines what comes to you. Your value determines who follows you. The last time I was in Ghana, I told a certain lady. She, she said she's been selling you know what we call Wache? For some years, and it still have to mouth. The first question I asked her, where do you live? When she mentioned it, I said, oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> that explains it. And I said, my dear, do you think you like what I'm going to tell you? 
He said, Pastor, anything that will help me. I said, the problem is you are poor and your food is sold to only poor people. Nothing will change. You see, there are some principles of life. I said, what are the quality of the people that patronize your food? Poor, right? Uh, supposing they are using dollars. Uh, give me a watch a hammer, Cora. Somebody to come and buy uh, two corners of what? Somebody will come and buy 50 cents. And you say, oh, I'm sure I have only a quarter. Please help me. He said, Pastor, what do I do? I said, do you know ministries? She said, yes. I said, now take your time. Go to ministries. You will see the, some of the things you sell there. Buy some and eat and compare the taste. And if you can do it, now do it, put it in a taxi and drive there. Let different people begin to patronize your food. Stop doing business with the poor. Well, and, and I'm, I'm saying this respectfully, I'm not insulting the poor. But this is what I always tell people. You don't flow with the poor and be rich. You are poor, all your friends are poor. What is wrong with you? And you expect a change? When you meet, how do you talk? See, life is not easy. Brother, do you have a 10, 10 bucks? In fact, we are believing God. It shall be well one day. That's how you talk. No, please. Nobody gets me wrong. Those of you watching me online, don't get me wrong. I'm not insulting the poor, no. All of us, God lifted us from somewhere. But the point I'm making is that we are a blessing to the poor. You understand? But you don't flow with the poor and be rich. That's the hard truth. So, I, I think, is it Dr. Mike Budok that said, he said, show me your, sac your cycle of friends and I'll predict your tomorrow. Let me see those that are your friends and I can tell you where you'll be tomorrow. You understand? So, all this traditional concept of, oh, we are all from Jamaica. That's where we are friends. We are all from Papua Guinea. We are all from Pakistan. We are all from Africa, so we are friends. And every one of you, bro, poor. A man of God says something. He said, among your circle of friends, is there anyone that there is an issue and you need emergency, 100,000? You can pick your phone and call and you take care for it. You have such a person, if you don't have it, you are not connected. Oh, I'm going to be saying some hard things to you guys. Though. So get ready. Because whether you like it or not, you are prospering. Amen. And you must, if you have to change friends, you will change. Amen. We are praying for God to bless us with destiny helpers. Some of us, the kind of friends you have are broken to destiny helpers. Because when a rich man comes to you and he looks at your friends, he says, ah, oh, this guy is not serious. You understand? You doing business. It's only poor people that patronize. Because the quality of your product is for the poor. We don't speak against the poor. We love them with every drop of blood in us. But we want to motivate everyone to rise in Christ. Don't stay at that level. Shall we stand up to our feet? If I don't stop, I'll start saying things I don't have to say now. Because now... When I start talking about poverty, I get angry. God, you are so good. God, you are kind. God, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. Excellent is thy name. Excellent is thy power. Lord, 
Amen. 